Okay, welcome to this tutorial on how to get your students signed in and signed up for Duck Soup and get them into your classroom. So, <clears throat> the first thing is obviously we come to Duck Soup, DuckSoup.us. Have your students go there. They're going to create their accounts just like you did. So they come here, create account. If they have Google, they just sign in with that. If they don't, they come here, they pick student. Make sure, you know, you have them pick student. If they don't, it's not the end of the world. You're just going to put in a help support ticket to have that changed because we try to make it a little more difficult for students to just switch back and forth to teacher so that they don't you know they, they don't abuse the system so that's kind of what that's really about so let's see <clears throat> so I'm just gonna go ahead and sign in with this student has a Google account let's go ahead and click that and this student here has already had other classes assigned and this is kind of what they look like so students don't have a dashboard. They don't have anything like that. They, um, this is what it looks like for a student. It automatically shows them how they have done on any of their e-sheets. They have the ability to drop the class, right? And they can switch and look at m multiple classes. And over here in the button where it has create a class for you, uh, they have join a class. And so this is what you have your students do. When they sign in, they're going to come over here to join a class. Of course, <clears throat> if your students have never signed in before, their first time to sign in is going to bring them just like this and check and make sure that they're, just like it did for you, it's going to check and make sure that their name is correct and update. Now, it's a little bit different on this page. For students, instead of, instead of Mr., Mrs., Doctor, you know, for teachers, uh, they have student ID. They're allowed, they can put in their student ID. And they can change their name, but as you can tell, teacher, and we'll talk about this later, teachers have the ability to lock students from changing their name. And then a teacher also has the ability to go and change a student's name or a student's ID for them. Okay, so uh, we want to join a class, and so it's really simple. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and split this view here for you. And so this is my student over here. Now you noticed that let's go back here so obviously this right here is grid view right up here at the top right if I click this this is a list view it's the same thing it has all the same uh, functions and abilities to do everything so it's the same thing pretty much it's just um, this is one way this, that's the other way that's really all it is so um, and I, it automatically does it so if you're like on a phone or something it's easier to see the list view and that's basically all it is now over here this is my teacher right and so my teacher <clears throat> my teacher needs to go and get the class code so if here's if I'm the teacher I need to go to the class period that I want these students so let's say it's my first period it automatically tells me that there's no students here's the class code so I say okay I got it and if I click class code I show this for my students they copy that down and uh, let's move that out to the side. Here's my students. And so for students, if they click on this, they can join a class. It brings this up. They put in the class code, click join. Then automatically they are given that e-sheet and, so, and told that they're not finished on it. Now when they click on this, this is what it looks like. on that. Remember the first page on that e-sheet, there wasn't any answers. And then now here's where the magic happens. So they go through and they select and they can answer, make their answers just like everything else. On the drawing, if they'll tell them to draw here, there's two different buttons you'll notice. <clears throat> it brings it up full screen so, you know, I can draw, I can change colors just like any other paint program. I could mark things out, I could underline, I could circle. Right, if I had a, a touchscreen device, it'd make it a lot easier. And right here in the bottom right, when I click on this, it automatically pastes it to the paper. Same thing here, when I show my work, of course, it makes it go full screen. Oh. Right, and I can, you know, whatever. I'm, I'm using a mouse, so it's a little different. But, you know, I can do all this stuff. It sticks it right there. I can put in my answer. It automatically grades it. Right here is the... Is the uh, written response <clears throat> so that's basically how that works if I had help text there would be a little tiny question mark 
and then that would bring this over for the help text or a help link if I had to put one in. So that's how students answer and that's what they experience. If you want you can create like a student account and um, you could practice and see how that works. Um, and that's how students get in and get assigned eSheets. Uh, whenever they work on eSheets and start to do it, when, what they're going to do is answer all the questions and they click grade eSheet. If they are on multiple page eSheet, it will automatically come up and say, hey, you're not on the last page. There's another page. Do you want to grade this anyway? So it tries to tell them. And so I'd say, oh, okay, there's another page. And then if I try to click grade eSheet, it'll say again, your eSheet is not complete. It'll highlight and try to stop them from grading the eSheet when it's not complete. So that's how that works. If there's any questions, please feel free to email me at support at ducksoup.us. Thank you.